Hi, welcome to May Love. Today we address the topic that many of you have inquired about, which is how to treat acne during pregnancy. In terms of what you can use, these are the four non-prescription, topically applied ingredients that the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommend. They are salicylic acid, glycolic acid, azelaic acid, and benzyl peroxide. And this is as of February 2023. There are some caveats here. With topical applied salicylic acid considered pregnancy safe up to 2% concentration, and some dermatologists and OBGYNs leaning to be a bit more cautious about benzyl peroxide and recommending against using it. At Maylove, we recommend three ingredients for treating acne during pregnancy azelaic acid, salicylic acid, and glycolic acid. If you're new here, my name is Jackie and I'm the CEO and Chief Product Obsessor here at Maylove. Pregnancy is a time when your body undergoes many rapid hormonal changes and a large majority, around 90% of women, notice some changes in their skin. While some women find their acne improves during pregnancy, others may find that their acne worsens or that they get acne for the first time. Even though these changes will often disappear postpartum, acne can leave scars or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Therefore, many women will want to treat pregnancy-related acne. Today, we will go over in detail what you can and can't use to treat acne in pregnancy, and rest assured, there are treatments for acne that work for you during your pregnancy. And to state the obvious, this video should not be used as a substitute for direct medical advice from your doctor. And as usual, the full write-up of this video is available by clicking on the link below. Now, first off, acne is one of the more common skin changes to occur during pregnancy. The other common skin changes are hyperpigmentation and stretch marks, and we'll have separate videos on this topic coming soon. In many women, acne actually improves during pregnancy. However, in others, acne can worsen or occur for the first time. Hormonal changes are known to contribute to acne breakouts, but the exact mechanisms behind acne breakouts in pregnant women are not well understood. So doctors can't really tell you for certain why acne worsens in some people, but improves in others during pregnancy. There is a wide variety of ingredients involved in acne treatment. Retinoids, benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, alpha hydroxy acids, azelaic acid, antibiotics, and hormonal agents. And the list is long. We'll go through each one by one and explain why each is suitable or not for use during pregnancy. Before doing that, let's take a quick detour and look at the general big picture when it comes to pregnancy and skincare. The FDA has a classification system for deeming what's risky to the developing fetus. And this system incorporates both the degree of risk as well as what's actually known in terms of hard data. At the top is category A, ingredients that have been proven through studies in pregnant women to show no risk of fetal abnormalities. Basically, A rating means that we know that it's not risky because we have the evidence. Here is the thing though, no ingredient for acne treatment is given a category A rating due to the lack of well-controlled studies in pregnant women. Because understandably, not many people want to run experiments on pregnant women. And this is the reason that it is advised that you err on the side of caution because high quality data is scarce when it comes to pregnancy and skincare and there is even less data regarding breastfeeding. So at the other end of the spectrum is category X, where there are studies in pregnant women or in animal studies that have demonstrated evidence of fetal abnormalities. So X means that we know for certain that there are risks because we have the evidence. And there are actually acne ingredients given this category X rating. There are tazeratine and isotretinoin, both retinoids. And then there is category B, B-rated ingredients are considered safe in pregnancy because these have been tested in animals and have been shown to have no negative effects on the fetus. Ingredients such as azelaic acid are category B. There are also categories C, D, and N. We'll skip discussing these categories in this video because I think it might just add confusion. But think of these as falling between B, which is deemed safe, and X, which is a hard no. Different doctors might have different opinions on ingredients that have C, D, and N ratings. Okay, now let's go through each ingredient one at a time. So let's start with retinoids. Topical retinoids are deemed unsafe to use while pregnant due to the risk of birth defects from systematic absorption. That is, 
from retinoids getting into your bloodstream and reaching your developing fetus. Retinoids are vitamin A derivatives, and vitamin A is important for many functions in the body, including proper fetal development. It's not that vitamin A is innately harmful. The problem lies in the unusually high amounts of vitamin A that might enter your blood circulation when you take retinoids. High amounts of retinoids can lead to birth defects in the developing fetus, known as retinoid embryopathy. Retinoid embryopathy includes a variety of unwanted conditions, facial and palatal defects, cardiovascular defects, and developmental problems of the central nervous system and thymus. And here is a reason that oral retinoids such as isotretinoin, also known as Accutane or Category X, and considered particularly dangerous to the fetus. When Accutane was first introduced in 1982, there were hundreds of reports of birth defects that occurred as a result. So it's not like anyone deliberately ran tests on pregnant women to see if retinoids caused birth defects. Rather, we had to learn them from painful experiences to not do this anymore. And this painful past is why topical retinoids are also considered a hard no, despite there being studies and data showing that some topical retinoids are likely not harmful. For example, while topical tazeratine caused birth defects in animal studies, topical tretinoin and adapalene did not. This is why tazeratine is rated category X, while tretinoin and adapalene are rated category C. Furthermore, there have been clinical studies that suggest that topical tretinoin does not raise overall blood serum vitamin A levels, nor does it lead to retinoid embryopathy. And in the decades of topical tretinoin use, there have been no confirmed cases of related fetal disruption in clinical trials. However, there have been isolated reported cases where topical tretinoin and adapalene use is associated with birth defects. So overall, it's just not worth it. Don't use it while pregnant. Considering that there are many other pregnancy safe options to treat acne, all retinoids during pregnancy are a definite no-no. It is not known if retinoids are excreted in breast milk, but again, it's safer to just assume that if something is a no during pregnancy, then it's also a no during breastfeeding. Let's move on to salicylic acid, which is a form of salicylate. Salicylates are a group of natural compounds found in many plants, including willow trees and winter greens. And you'd also see them found in various items, such as fruits, vegetables, spices, and condiments. Salicylates are also used in medicine. The most well-known form is aspirin, also known as acetyl salicylic acid, which is used as a pain reliever and anti-inflammatory medication. Aspirin works by blocking the production of prostaglandins, which are the molecules that cause pain and inflammation. In addition to aspirin, other salicylates such as chlorine salicylate and magnesium salicylate are also used as pain relievers and anti-inflammatory agents. Salicylates can also be used in topical formulations to treat skin conditions such as acne, psoriasis, and warts. Salicylic acid is a salicylate that is commonly used in skincare products for its ability to penetrate oil-rich follicles, making it effective in treating acne. And salicylic acid also has anti-inflammatory and exfoliating properties that make it beneficial for improving the overall appearance and health of the skin. It is considered a category C ingredient by the FDA because of the possibility of salicylate toxicity at very high levels of salicylates in the bloodstream. And it's the same reason aspirin is not recommended during pregnancy. Also, it is not recommended during breastfeeding because it carries a risk of causing bleeding disorders in the nursing infant. However, at lower levels of absorption into the bloodstream, salicylic acid is considered to be safe. The generally accepted safety threshold during pregnancy is at 2% concentration of salicylic acid for topical formulations. And this is set based on studies that show minimal absorption into the bloodstream at this concentration level. At a level higher than 2% concentration, the safety is questioned. So chemical peels where concentrations run much higher than 2% salicylic acid are considered a no. Now let's move on to benzyl peroxide. Benzyl peroxide is an antibacterial agent that kills P. acnes, the bacterium implicated in acne growth. Furthermore, it is rated category C 
as animal studies have not confirmed its safety and no studies have tested this ingredient in pregnant women. Hence, some dermatologists will err on the side of caution and say that one should avoid it. It is also not known whether benzoyl peroxide is excreted to breast milk. However, what is known is that benzoyl peroxide becomes benzoic acid once it is absorbed into the skin. Benzoic acid is a food additive known to be safe for pregnant women. So the majority of dermatologists consider benzoyl peroxide safe for pregnant women. Benzoyl peroxide is probably the most in the gray area acne ingredient in terms of dermatologists being split on the recommendations for pregnancy use. We recommend that you talk to your obstetrician or dermatologist before using it while you're pregnant or breastfeeding. At Maylove, we're not generally fans of benzoyl peroxide in general because it is quite harsh on the skin. So we think that you'd be better off skipping it whether you're pregnant or not. Now let's consider alpha hydroxy acids. Glycolic acid. Glycolic acid, lactic acid, and other alpha hydroxy acids are often used alone or in concert with salicylic acid to treat acne. Alpha hydroxy acids have animal studies that have shown no teratogenic effects, effects that result in fetal abnormality. However, they are rated category N by the FDA as in not yet rated, as in the FDA has no opinion on it. However, Glycolic acid and lactic acid are not expected to be dangerous as only a small amount is absorbed through the skin and into the bloodstream. It is widely considered safe to use in pregnancy if in a formulation with a concentration of 10% or lower and a pH of 3.5 or higher. Next up, let's look at azelaic acid. If you're pregnant, many dermatologists will recommend azelaic acid for the treatment of acne. This is because azelaic acid is an antibacterial and anti-inflammatory agent that is considered safe for pregnancy. This is a category B ingredient as rated by the FDA. While there is little data in pregnant women, as usual, azelaic acid is not associated with fetal effects in animal studies. That's the reason behind its B rating. Furthermore, it is a normal constitute of milk and also found in wheat, rye, and barley. As azelaic acid is naturally present in foods we regularly consume, and as animal studies show no risks to the fetus, it is considered safe to use during pregnancy. There are prescription products with azelaic acid at 15% or 20% concentration. Non-prescription versions are generally capped at 10% and below. So to conclude, these are the ingredients for acne treatment deemed safe to use during pregnancy. Salicylic acid in 2% concentration or lower, glycolic acid in 10% concentration or lower and a pH of 3.5 or higher, azelaic acid is fine to use, and benzoyl peroxide is a bit split. Personally, I'd skip it because even if it's not harmful during pregnancy, it is just a harsh ingredient. And now, let's talk about some prescription products. Obviously, your doctor will pick out the appropriate treatment for you since these are available by prescription only. We'll just provide some quick background information here in this video. First, antibiotics. Topical antibiotics such as clindamycin and ethromycin have been found to be safe to use during pregnancy. It is unknown whether these topical antibiotics are distributed into breast milk, so caution is advised again while breastfeeding. Your prescribing physician should be able to give you guidance on this. Many other oral antibiotics are not recommended during pregnancy. Oral antibiotics such as tetracyclines cross the placenta and can result in bone growth inhibition. Tetracyclines are category D, which means there is a known risk in pregnant women, so they should only be used in rare instances where the benefits outweigh the potential harm. Furthermore, tetracyclines are known to be distributed in breast milk. Hence, these are not to be used during pregnancy nor during breastfeeding. There's a category of sulfone agents also in the antibiotics category. Topical dapsin is a synthetic sulfone agent with antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties and is considered category C by FDA. Since there is uncertainty, dermatologists will only prescribe it in pregnancy if the benefits clearly outweigh the risks. Dapsone is known to be excreted in human milk and so it should be avoided while breastfeeding. Now let's talk about spironolactone and other hormonal agents. Spironolactone can treat hormonal acne and herstacism due to its anti-antigen effects. 
Androgens are basically male sex hormones, but it is also present in women, just like how estrogen is present in men as well. And women with high levels of androgens may get acne and hirsutism, which is getting unusual growth in facial, chest, and back hair. However, spironolactone is advised against use during pregnancy as it can increase the risk of feminization in a male fetus. As many of you probably know, oral contraceptive pills are also approved to be used in the treatment of hormonal acne, but they are rated category X by the FDA and therefore oral contraceptives should not be used during pregnancy. Finally, you can also get laser and light therapies to treat acne, although limited information is available about their efficacy. The most evidence exists for photodynamic therapy, also known as PDT. These light therapies are generally regarded as safe to use during pregnancy, but the numbing solution could affect the developing fetus, so consult with your dermatologist before getting a PDT treatment. That's it for today's video. Click on the link below for the write-up of this video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. It helps us reach more people who might also like this type of content. Thanks for your support and see you again next time.